Today I'm going to be attacking the cracks on the rear panel. Now we've got to scurf these horrible welds back and basically recut the cracks because there's been a fair amount of movement on the rear and it's gone out of sync. So there's about a three mil disturbance in it, which will have to be bent back to put it back to how it was originally. My mate Rocket Josh, or Josh McLaren, otherwise known as Rocket, has lent me this, uh, this electric die grinder. Now this is just worth its weight in gold so we don't have compressors running and tools going and it just doesn't matter. But this is just one of the best tools I've used so far for this. Now what we're doing, we're following the cracks and we're putting indents in them so we can fill them with welds. So we're not going right through the work. We just want to give the weld something to penetrate into because if we just weld to the surface exactly the same thing will happen that happened before it will just look rough you'll see the weld on the surface what we want to do is weld it so it penetrates into the work and then we can scurf it back so it's flat and you don't see it so we're using a, a coned ended one so we can get right in just have to be patient with it don't overwork it We've grooved all of these cracks out and the purpose of doing this is so, so when you're welding it with the MIG, the, the, the weld penetrates right back into the work. So when you're grooving it, don't groove right through, leave about a mil behind it and then that will fill up nicely, penetrate in, then we can scurf it back and you'd never even see that it was there. We've also got rid of that nasty repair that was going on here where this, this panel was actually about three mil back and rather than straightening it out, pulling it back and welding it, They've just gummed it up with this big slug of a weld. Um, you see it quite a lot. So we've got rid of that. We've recut that, um, pulled that forward. It's all going to be good now. It was quite tight to get in there with the, the grinder, but that's all good. The other side, that there's the bit that's come away. Now I'm probably going to have to take that off totally because water's got in there and caused a bit of rust and it's just blowing out, stopping it from going back nice and, and being a, a perfect panel. So we'll probably take that off, get all that rust out of there pop it back in, groove it out and weld it. Now, there's a bit here on the, see we've got, this, we've got the chassis upside down at the minute. Um, so this is the rear front spring hanger mount. Now, there's a big crack that runs up almost identical to the bracket itself. Now, this is really, really important that we get a deep penetrating weld in here. Um, so I've used the, the Makita die grinder. We've got a nice big deep groove going through there. And what we'll do, each end of the crack We'll drill a hole to terminate the crack. So it won't happen because we're going to do such a good repair on it. But if they ever wanted to crack again, it's got nowhere to go. So that, that hole will be the termination point. It can't jump the hole. So I, I wasn't able to get right up to the top in, inside the chassis. So the crack actually continues and comes out and over the top. Now I've, I've come out and I've grooved it out at the top there. I'm going to do the same again up the other end, drill a hole, terminate it, and fill that in. And that'll be, uh, that'll be all good. So. I better get the welder out, get it set up, ready to go. Let's do it. Right now, before I get stuck into the welding on the chassis, I thought I'd show you the panels. Now, they've come back from SEQ on-site services, all um, epoxy primed, all ready to go. Now, we've got the, the, the light surrounds there, and the light brackets, they've all, they're all perfect. Got the, the washer bottle and the expansion bottle bracket there. That's all good. The uppers, we've got a little bit of work to do on the, the, uh, the number plate holder. When we've got the front panel, the bib, some people call it. Now, it's all looked good, but now it's been sandblasted. You can see that someone's done actually a half decent repair on it. Now, I'm not surprised because they always corrode in this area. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave that probably. Maybe just do something with the welds, flatten them off a bit um, and go from there. Now, we've got the doors. Now, these are actually in a half decent condition. I've seen a lot worse. We've got a little bit of, little bit of a repair, a dodgy repair, I might say on one of the corners of the windows. I'll probably take that out and replace that because it's just not, it's not up to my standards. So, but I will say one thing, the good thing about these old panels is that they're made out of thicker steel. Back in the day, they used to use decent, decent steel and you can, it will take a bit of corrosion. It will take a bit of sandblasting. And when they're as good as they are down at SEQ services, they know not to hit this thing too hard with the blaster. They, you saw their work in a previous video, the way they, they work that paint and the, and, the, and the bog off, it's perfect. Try not to take any metal off it at all. 
That's why we go to SEQ. And look at it, you just see the results, it's awesome. So the customer Brad bought the rest of the rear upper panels. Uh, they've seen better days, definitely. You got uh, real corrosion at the top corners here and at the bottom. So we're gonna get them blasted and we're gonna have to use them again because these are quite rare. I don't know many people that have got any. Uh, we're gonna, the windows are good. The rubbers are good around the windows. So we're gonna try and save those, save the customers some money on the build because the, uh, the, wi the window rubbers are actually quite expensive. The one real bit that's of concern for me is the bit that goes across the top at the rear. Now that's really got in there, the, the rust and have to build that back up or try and find another one because it is at that stage. I really don't know what to do with it, but we'll be all right. We've got the, the little, the little gussets there are all good, which is a bonus. But I think we really got our work cut out when it comes to these. So anyway, let's get on. We need to bend this bit of chassis straight. Now I'm hoping, because it's bent back slightly, I'm hoping when we straighten this out, that will naturally push it back into its original state. So what I've done, we've got this big bit of wood here. We've cut it just higher than the axle stand is. So the whole weight of this side of the chassis is sitting down on the bit of wood here. And we're just going to be tapping it here, tapping it, hitting it, uh, to straighten that bit out, straighten that, make that nice and flat like the other side. So I need a bit more. That's coming along, but I need something to be just underneath that bit there. So. Wheel nut that's lying around on the floor, so I don't think it's going to be needed any time in the future or at all. So we've just put that under the bit that, that curves down. We'll give that another go. Look, this is how bad someone's repaired this in the past. Look, I've just been hitting that. See how that's come up. You can see how the weld is just sitting on the surface. Now, that is why it's so important to put a groove in there so the weld will penetrate in and flow through the work, not just spit and patter on the surface. That's no good. We're doing it properly. Pretty happy with that. That's come back somewhat. I think it might just need a bit more. Looking at the other side, it's still a bit out. Yeah, I think we're about there. Well, it's a hell of a lot better than it was. 